Thank you. Today I'm going to take you on a journey of hope, a journey of, to brilliance. Four years ago, this four-year-old boy stood in the bathroom cleaning his teeth for about three seconds until <laughs> he noticed his reflection in the mirror and he started pulling faces and enjoying the show that he was putting on for himself. Beside him in the doorway, his father also stood enjoying the show and then he noticed that his son was looking at the outside of himself so he said, Nathan, look in your eyes and tell me what you see in there. And this little boy looked, and he looked, and he looked, and he said, I see God. A couple of weeks ago, I read an article in the paper about a 20-year-old who was involved in a car accident and is now in jail. He was described by family members as a brainy young boy with a bright future. But he got involved with alcohol and drugs at school. It's a well-worn path. And I ask, why is it that a beautiful, amazing little kid, sorry, I'm so emotional after Rob's <laughs> presentation, why are our amazing, beautiful young kids lost on the way to adulthood? I learned to shut down my heart when I was yelled at and beaten by my parents. I learned to close down my feelings when I was told that boys don't cry even when they hurt real bad. I, was learned that I, I learned that I wasn't creative when my best ever picture wasn't selected for the class art display. I learned I was bad when my church minister told us what was right and what was wrong. So by the age of 15 and 16, I turned off family, I turned off school, I turned off myself and I like many of my friends, turn on to alcohol and drugs. When I left school, I started my business. And it was a great opportunity for me to learn how to work differently with people in a way where people could work together Diverse range of people could work together with respect for each other and for a common purpose. And for me, it led to my calling. Now I know what I want to do in this life. Oops. Sorry, it's a wee bit ahead of the game there. You see, when we're born... We have, we're born with this amazing supercomputer. It's kind of a, an ultra-special MacBook Pro with Word and Excel and PowerPoint and PageMaker and Safari and iTunes and iPhoto and iMovie and Crystal Ball, Dreamweaver. We're born with an amazing range of software and the challenge to do something unique and brilliant with our lives. But I would guess that everyone here has heard the story, the urban myth, that we're only operating to 10% of our potential. I actually checked out the science for this. I couldn't find any scientific evidence. <laughs> but nevertheless, the story persists because it resonates within us. Now this, to me, is great news. Not agreeing with me? <laughs> well, I would hate to think that we're operating at 100% of our potential whilst we're making such a mess of life on this planet. <laughs> so the good news is that we don't have to reinvent ourselves. 
which is just as well because we can't even reinvent corn without killing off the butterflies and the bees. All we have to do is to find the software that's locked away on our hard drive, turn it on, and figure out how to use it. How do we do this? How do we, as a human race, upgrade ourselves? Well, education is the key. Because education is the only institution in society that reaches all of us and reaches us in the most formative time of our lives. But education, as we practice it today, was developed four or five hundred years ago. And it was developed to teach us to read and write, do arithmetic, and to memorise not existing knowledge. And this was in a time when all the books of knowledge would have filled a very small library. Reading, writing, arithmetic and remembering, the four R's, actually involve the left hemisphere of the neocortex. And if you've one of the six million people who've looked at Jill Bolte Taylor's TED talk, you'll know that this part of the brain is logical and linear. It's concerned with the past and the future. It's where we store our knowledge and it separates us from the rest of the world. And that's the problem. We've been busy exercising this part of ourselves, this fraction of ourselves, for the last four or five hundred years at the exclusion of the rest of ourselves. And you know with a muscle, the one you exercise grows big and strong and the ones you don't, atrophy. So I've no doubt that this was a kind of rather important thing for us to do four or five hundred years ago and it's led through the, us to the Industrial Revolution, our machinery, our mass production systems, our economic processes, etc., have come from this part of the brain. But as Ken Robinson, Jill Bolte Taylor are telling us, it's time to move on. It's time to develop the rest of ourselves. Now, the cool thing is, of course, there are plenty of other regions in the brain that are just waiting to be discovered. If you take a trip over here to the right hemisphere of the neocortex, you'll discover the world of here and now that's connected to the whole of life. You take a wee cruise around the limbic system, you'd be in the seat of your emotions with channels right throughout the whole of your body. Short stroll into the reptilian brain, it's the part of us that manages our physicality. You can take an escalator all the way up to the frontal lobes and discover the seat of your vision, your intuition, and then stairway down into the heart the core of our being. Maybe you need to find a rusty old key to let you in there. So it's no wonder that our kids don't like school. The majority of them tell us that school is boring, that lessons are irrelevant. <coughs> they don't like the authoritarian cultures. They don't like the way they're treated without respect. They, this is a generation of kids that are no longer prepared to be limited to learning Word and Excel. They want to develop the whole of themselves so they can create the world that we want to live in. The current scientific age that we live in, maybe the current age that we live in, was imagined by a child. Albert Einstein imagined flying to the earth alongside a beam of light. And those two incredible theories that he came up with that have changed our way of thinking and leading us into this new age that we're entering came at the right young age of 25. 
Now, I imagine an education system which supports children to retain, to grow, to develop the incredible abilities that we're all born with and supports them to find the most satisfying path for their lives. Now, I started my own journey of exploration into human consciousness, human, human condition, about 15 years ago. From the inside, through my own journey, my own experiences, and from the outside, by studying, reading the works, the, exp uh, the writings of other contemporary explorers and, and thinkers. And as I began to turn on some of my own pieces of locked away software, I realised that this is what I needed when I was a kid. So I gathered together a group of ex-educators and together we have imagined a new vision for education And it's based on three main principles. So this is, this is about as nutshell as you can give something which is massive. First principle is that it has a highly supportive operating system. So our model of education makes learning easy, enjoyable and exciting so that kids open, they engage with the education and they learn so much more and so much more rapidly than what they do in normal education, stand in existing education. Secondly, we're restoring the personal software that was these kids that we have lost. So our kids tune into themselves, tune into their innate, their unique physical, emotional, mental and intuitive programs and operate them themselves. And thirdly, it plugs them into the whole wide world of information as we know it today. And part of this is learning the principles, the fundamental principles that underpin the whole of life so they can use their software for the benefit of the planet. It's no longer just a concept. We moved beyond the concept stage, and a year and a half ago, we started our first school. It's called Seven Oaks, and it's here in Christchurch, New Zealand. And I'd like to just share a bit of the feedback. These are the changes, some of the changes that our parents noticed in their children in the first year of school. They noticed the children grew an amazingly large enthusiasm for school and for life. These are actual quotes. They noticed enormous personal growth, improved social abilities in their kids. The children are far more creative. They're reading better, they're maths, they've learned more maths, they're learning to trust adults again. And they have a much deeper connection with nature. This is what the kids have to say about it. Is it more fun to be on holiday or back at school? Back at school, school. Okay. Something back at school. For some reason it looks really welcoming and friendly. I mean, when you would walk in the gate to our old school, it's kind of like, here we go again, we're on school. I like it because um, everybody's friendly and classes um, are a really nice environment to learn in and the outside. to 
to um, the map, like a little town or something, or mm -hmm. something like that. Or yeah, something like that. You'd, you'd be able to do that, and they would sort of guide you along the way. How about that? <laughs> You're free to do more. That's a big statement. And if you want to build a small town, they'll guide you along the way. <laughs> God, I wish I'd gone to that school. <laughs> so if I go back to my computer analogy, the reason we get dimmed down is because of the viruses that get in. Due to outdated operating systems, or simply because we don't have the firewalls in place. If we go back to the example of boys don't cry, and I didn't have the protection in place to protect me from that outdated concept that came from a really old operating system. So I literally rewired myself to stop myself from feeling the pain. If we go back to a four-year-old boy standing there in front of the mirror, seeing something incredibly special inside himself. Something so brilliant and bright and so precious that he doesn't want to lose and that we never wanted to lose either. Is it inevitable that our kids get dimmed down to 10% of who they're born with? Clearly it's not. Our kids want what the world needs. Our kids want to be whole. They don't want to live in a world that's ugly. They want to live in tune with nature. They want to work together to solve the problems of our world. And they want to live in a world where it's safe to open your heart. Are we prepared to change education so that our kids can grow into the missing 90% and create the world that they want to create? Let's create hope for a generation. Thank you.